이번에는 나라박 소식입니다. 이스라엘과 팔레스타인의 지속적인 분쟁이 어제 오늘 이야기가 는 아닌데요. 최근 팔레스타인은 분노의 날을 지정하고 시위를 벌이다 진압하던 이스라엘과 무력 충돌하는 상황이 발생했습니다. 많은 인명피해도 있었는데요. 이스라엘에서 전해온 소식입니다. Ahead of the day of rage, rioting Palestinians burned the tomb of the biblical patriarch Joseph in Nablus. Foreign Ministry Director General Dory Gold said it was similar to the actions of extremist Muslim groups from Afghanistan to Libya. Days of rage usually include Palestinian rioting and confrontation with Israeli troops at flashpoints in Judea and Samaria or the West Bank. Following a week of terror attacks, Israeli security was out in full force on Friday for the Palestinians' declared day of rage. Prime Minister Netanyahu told journalists that incitement is behind the current wave of terrorism and violence. First on the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the outrageous claims that we are changing the status quo there or intend to destroy it. And now we have a new big lie. That new big lie is that Israel is executing Palestinians. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas accused Israel of executing what he called an innocent Palestinian boy. That boy stabbed an Israeli boy his own age earlier this week. First of all, he's not dead. He's alive. This uh, Palestinian terrorist is now being treated in Hadassah Hospital in Israel. As for Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount, Israel says, as always, only Muslims are allowed to pray there. Christians and Jews have limited access and no prayer allowed. Netanyahu said the trouble doesn't have anything to do with whether or not there are peace talks. They're attacking us not because they want peace or don't want peace, it's because they don't want us here. Tension in Israel is palpable. Many Israelis are staying away from public places. Others aren't giving in. I've never seen a time like this before in my, my entire life. I've heard about it when I was a kid, by the second to father, but I never, heard it, I never felt this way. You know, when I see something on Facebook, it hurts inside to see it. And, um, you know, I, uh, I feel bad and I, I hope that anyone who gets injured is heal, healed fast. Yeah, it is sometimes uh, it's scary to walk around. But um, it's, not, it's not that scary because I know, I know I believe in God and I know he's going to help us. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Christians, of course, have strong ties to Israel and the Jewish people. And Dr. Cornelius Becker is the chair of biblical studies at Regent University and and joins us now to explain this eternal relationship. So interesting. So why do you think that Christians feel a special connection with the Jewish people, with Israel? The history of Israel ahead is, of course, our history. The history of Israel is about God's choice. God chose Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph here, the very tomb that's now been set on fire. And so we feel a, 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 a kinship with Israel because it's about God's choice and it's our history. Jesus was a Jew. Paul was a Jew. The early church were all Jewish. Mm-hmm. Going beyond politics right now, what do you think are the potential reasons why we are seeing all this violence in Israel? I think throughout the history, many forces have risen up against Israel. And in my reading, it's always about God's sovereignty. God's choice. This is an affront not only to Christians, but ultimately against the sovereign choice of God. So for Christians sitting at home who sometimes it's easy to get numb to what's going on, why should they really care about what's happening in Israel? I think this is a marker of something greater that's happening in the world. And this is indeed forces rising up, not only against Israel, not only against Christianity, but against the reign of God himself. Mm. How do you encourage Christians here to pay attention, watch, help? Uh, How should we be responding as we're we're hearing about all this? I think two very important things that we need to do immediately. First and foremost, I think all Christians should stand up in support of Israel and the Jewish people. These uh, people are indeed part of our heritage. And secondly, as the scripture says, we have to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Prayer, prayer, prayer. All right. And explain a little bit about some of the prophetic significance about Israel. Right. And so ultimately, when you look at especially the Apostle Paul, Paul says that the history of Israel is a test about God's faithfulness. Will God do what he said he would do for Israel? And of course, once God has done what he said he would do for Israel, he would do it for the church and he would do it for the rest of the world. And this is the reason why it's so important. Well, I know it has a lot of people's attention this week and really interesting to think about our response as Christians and, you know, how we should be observing it all. So, Dr. Becker, thanks for your time.